This is a Transportation TV News update. I'm Tony Dorsey reporting. On Friday, February 12th, Washington was back at work after a record four-day shutdown. On Capitol Hill, Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid, Democrat from Nevada, proposed a scaled-down jobs bill he hopes will move quickly in the Senate. Reid's latest bill would renew highway and transit programs through the end of the year and help states and local governments finance large infrastructure projects. It would also give new tax breaks to companies that hire unemployed workers and for small businesses that purchase new equipment. An aide to Mr. Reid told the Wall Street Journal Friday that Democrats hope to move forward with the revised legislation when the Senate returns from its President's Day recess the week of February 22nd. Speed is essential since the current highway and transit programs will expire on February 28th. Also Friday, a major winter storm hit the south, bringing several inches of snow to at least a half dozen southern states. The northeast was still digging out from the double punch of winter storms that started in the Midwest the week of February the 8th and moved eastward, breaking records and causing havoc for airports, Amtrak, and state DOTs. 54.9 inches of snow has fallen on Washington, D.C. this winter, breaking a 111-year record. The federal government closed for a record four consecutive days, idling 270,000 workers. And while the storms moved on, problems lingered. On Friday, a train derailed on D.C.'s metro system, and snow removal remained a big challenge. As the Senate debates the merits of a jobs bill, Ashto has released a new report that has been touted by California Senator Barbara Boxer. Projects and Paychecks, a one-year report on state transportation successes under the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act, was released by Ashto in conjunction with state transportation departments in Nevada, Michigan, Georgia, and Rhode Island. The study finds that one year after its passage, state DOTs have set an amazing record of speed and efficiency, putting 77% of the $34.3 billion provided for highways and transit out to bid on 12,250 transportation projects. The 9,240 projects under construction totaled $20.6 billion. 150 of these projects are profiled on the companion website recovery.transportation.org. As a result of the Recovery Act, 280,000 direct on-project jobs have been created or sustained across the country. During a tele-news conference on Tuesday, February the 9th, Ashdo President and Executive Director of the Mississippi Department of Transportation, Larry Butch Brown said, that's a lot of projects and paychecks. U.S. unemployment in the construction trades has surpassed 20 percent. Recovery dollars are helping to rescue thousands of workers, Brown said. In a statement, California Democratic Senator Barbara Boxer, chairman of the Senate Committee on Environment and Public Works, said, quote, this report shows that investing in our bridges, highways, and transit creates jobs and builds infrastructure needed by families, businesses, and communities. Holding regional news conferences to release the report and showcase their state recovery projects were Rhode Island DOT Director Michael P. Lewis, Georgia Department of Transportation Commissioner Vance C. Smith, Jr., Michigan DOT Director Kurt Steidel, and Susan Martinovich, Director of the Nevada State Department of Transportation. And finally, more than 20 competitors from nine countries competed in the World Road Association's first International Snowplow Championship in Quebec City, Canada. The skill competition focuses on the driving, precision, and safety awareness demonstrated by snowplow operators as they maneuver through an obstacle course Ashto sponsored two competitors from the main Department of Transportation, Ryan Campbell and Joseph Osgood. When it was over, Campbell took home the gold. That's the Transportation TV News Update. I'm Tony Dorsey reporting.